This video is on the three parts of gravity. And I wanted to do this because when people study gravity, they don't realize there's three parts to it. And in order to understand it, you have to account for each of the three parts and understand where they came from, how they evolved, and, and how they turn out to be the way they are. And each of these parts is important because it plays a role in how our understanding of gravity evolved. And to begin with, to understand these three parts, you have to answer three different questions. One is, what is the cause of acceleration? What pushes the objects to accelerate? Two, what is the cause of dimensions and time, or dimensions and clock rates, or dimensions and frequencies? And we have to understand that in order to understand relativity theory. We have to know where the dimensions come from and where the clock rates come from. And then three, we have to answer the question of where inertia comes from. What's the cause of inertia? And Newton and Einstein didn't answer any of these questions which is why our theory of gravity is such a mess right now. And what the answers give us is three parts. And part one, when we look at the cause of acceleration, we have to look at more than just the cause of acceleration of gravity. We have to look at electrical effects between charges in orbit, the gravitational effects between neutral bodies in orbit, and then we also have to look at effects like a rotating top that precesses in a different type of orbit. And in each one of these cases, the cause of acceleration is the same. And that's where the physicists screwed up. Because if you have to answer the question, what is the cause of electromagnetic acceleration? You can't do what Einstein did and just say, Oh, gravitational acceleration, it doesn't need a cause, it just follows the curvature. Because you still need a cause of electromagnetic acceleration. And once you have understanding electromagnetic acceleration, you understand gravitational acceleration. And you understand that it's something real, and it's the same thing as electromagnetic. I mean, you can think of it in terms of two magnets. If I push one magnet to push another magnet, these magnets are connected through the quantum field. So there's some type of quantum field structure that we know from the Faraday field lines. There are field lines that cause a repulsive formation. And it's this quantum field structure that causes acceleration of bodies electromagnetically and gravitationally. So that's part one. That part gives us the Newtonian component of gravity, the basic orbits, the basic pushing of two bodies together. What causes, if you have two bodies that are stationary, what causes them to be pushed together? General relativity doesn't answer that. Newtonian theory doesn't answer that. In order to have that, you have to have a quantum field pressure that pushes the bodies together. In part two, where do dimensions and time come from? Well, they don't come from non-physical space. Einstein said there's non-physical space, but it has physical dimensions and physical clocks somehow that he doesn't know or understand. Well, if we actually study quantum field theory, and I'm a quantum field theorist, Quantum fluctuations have wavelengths and frequencies. So quantum fluctuations have physical dimensions and clock rates. So that's where they come from. They come from the quantum field. They don't come from something magically else. And at the same time, you get permittivity, permeability, and the speed of light are emergent properties of the quantum field which give you all your relativistic behavior and tell us the reason why photons behave the way they do because 
their behavior is based on the local permittivity and permeability, which is affected by the local mass, the local matter distribution. So that gives us the second part. We have to answer the question of where do the dimensions and time come from. And the third part is what's the cause of inertia? And this is another one where Newton and Einstein both kicked the can down the road and didn't try to answer it. But by failing to answer it, they failed to understand that it's a much bigger issue. And many have written about it, and starting with uh, Heaviside in the 1890s, that if you answer this question, you end up with a form of self induction where a body moves through space and it causes quantum fluctuations to rotate, and the quantum fluctuation rotation causes the body to continue to move. This is self-induction just like electromagnetic self-induction, except it happens with electrically neutral objects. But once you have inertia as a form of self-induction that causes this type of rotation in the field that's like electromagnetic self-induction, and you have a field that is like a magnetic field that's formed by electrically neutral objects moving, then things like the spinning top or gyroscope have a, are due to effects where they're causing the quantum field to rotate. And the top is pushing against and interacting with the quantum field. And it turns into an entire Maxwell force. You have a force that obeys Maxwell's equation. Now this is not gra gravity. This is has nothing to do with gravity because it affects bodies that are non-gravitational, like inertia, like the tops and gyroscopes. And it's also part and built into the electromagnetic force because you have to consider the proportionality to mass with the electromagnetic force. So inertia is already built in to the electromagnetic Maxwell equation. So it's already part of it, it's already built into it. But this, that is the reason for the anomalous precession of Mercury. It's not general relativity. And so you need that component, the third component, the inertial, the Maxwell force, in order to explain precession of Mercury. But it also explains tidal force interactions, and it explains the, a Lorentz force, which gives you an additional attraction that explains the shape of spiral galaxies and accounts for much of the dark matter problem. Once you have this Maxwell force, you fix the dark matter problem to a large degree. There's still other forms of matter we can't see, but this accounts for the mathematical error that we see in spiral galaxies, for example. So those are the three parts. The three parts are the Newtonian component due to the basic quantum field pressure, the general relativistic effects on light due to the change in dimensions and clock rates near matter, and lastly, the neutral Maxwell force that gives us the precession of perihelion. And you need all three of those if you're going to understand gravity, everything that's lumped under gravity under the current theory. And once you understand them, you also realize that they're all electromagnetic. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like, share it with your physicist friends, and subscribe for my next videos. And I also have my book, The Zero Point Universe, where I describe this in basic terms and my other two books. And I'm a retired independent researcher, so if you buy one of my books, or if you donate using my PayPal or Patreon, that helps support my research. So I appreciate that if you'd like to, to support me. And if you buy one of my books, I hope you learn something more from that. So thanks for watching.